My name is uh, Billy Murphy. Uh, my Chinese name is Ma Weilian. I'm from America, uh, particularly Florida, near Miami. And uh, I'm semi-retired, so I don't do anything but have fun, uh, hang out with family, and I shoot YouTube videos for fun as well. How long have you been in Taiwan? Uh, I've been coming here since 1995 for a vacation. Uh, and I live here now seasonally uh, since 2019. Why do you choose to come to Taiwan? Uh, my wife's Taiwanese and her family lives here. 1995 and Taiwan now, what is the difference? Biggest difference, it is a lot cleaner. Pollution was more present back in 1995. Uh, and public transportation has drastically improved with the uh, uh, advent of the MRT system, which didn't exist back then. So that lowered pollution and made it a lot more convenient to, to get it around. Uh, and internet on there with Google makes it a lot easier to get around and connect to the buses because buses don't have a lot of English on their signs or the local stations where Google can help a foreigner get through through that, which was not very easy back in 95. When you went on the streets, you may see a lot of taxis now, but back then it was like just a sea of taxis. It's one of the things I remember, other than the culture shock of just how, uh, you know, how different it is compared to America. Mm -hmm. There was a little more family oriented than maybe the States, uh, more, you know, for elders. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I like uh, cars, so I know there's a big difference in the cultural use of cars. Uh, you don't really have to have one here, but in America you pretty much absolutely have to, except for a couple cities that uh, you can get away without one, like Manhattan or maybe downtown Chicago, pretty much everywhere else you have to have a car. Uh, here it's more just a convenience factor uh, for a lot of folks. Uh, even if you live in the suburbs, you don't really need a car, but it can be, you know, more useful. But parking is, it can, be, it can be really tough in this this yeah, area. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but to me, culturally, is the the car scene, modified car world, custom cars. You do see some uh, occasionally here, but you don't have like uh, like in America where I'm at. We have car shows constantly, where car meetups. We have organized drag racing, you know, we have yeah. the American style of being in a car scene and uh, you just don't find here often. I know there is some underground car meetups and some car stuff, but I'm not privileged to it. You came here because of uh, your family. Yes. Um, why, why, why come to Taiwan? Why you didn't, your family couldn't go to America to stay with you? Uh, they could, but they like Taiwan better. Okay. So they didn't want to come, and I, uh, my wife likes it here, and I like it here as well. Uh, one of our plans when we got closer to retirement, we figured we'd come here. It's a lot more affordable to retire in Taiwan than America, especially related to any health care or long-term uh, health care needs. The costs are vastly uh, uh, different between here and America. During your stay here, what's your most difficult challenge that you have to overcome or yet to overcome? Uh, learning Chinese. Learning Chinese. <laughs> uh, I'm not good with language to begin with. I don't hear tone uh, very well, so it's extremely difficult for me uh, uh, to master any Chinese so far. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to those who wishes to come to Taiwan? Jobs can be somewhat limited if you don't know Chinese, unless you want to be an English teacher, which uh, can be to, uh, one of the better paying jobs for foreigners. They do have a bit of a bias. They want them to look like me, uh, not like some of my ABC friends or like American born Taiwanese or Chinese, even though they're perfectly fluent in English. They just don't look like they're supposed to speak English and they're not as well uh, uh, integrated into the schooling system or private down there. They'd much rather have somebody like, like me or from some other English speaking country. Uh, IT jobs are pretty prevalent or today if you can work remotely, uh, cost of living's good. Uh, the people here are great. They're pretty accommodating to everybody. You'll never be mistaken as a, a local or accepted as pure Taiwanese, but you're highly accepted as a foreigner here. I, I think the most Taiwanese have no problem and, and like you know the foreigners that are here. I don't think they'll ever. They'll accept you as like 
integrated foreigner, I guess is the way to say it, and they would be very accommodating to you and could be very good friends with them. But if you ask, are you Taiwanese, like really, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you'll ever be, but that's not unusual other Asian countries. Japan, I know people have stayed there, uh, and I've seen some YouTubers that actually uh, were born, uh, born in America but raised from like age three in Taiwan, and they're 50, and they're still not considered. They don't have J Japanese blood. You don't have Taiwanese blood, so you're never really Taiwanese without that. If you are to change anything in Taiwan, what would it be? Personally, I'd love to have single-family home with a yard. Uh, but the, some of the charm here is the density that makes it so convenient uh, as well. What stands out most about Taiwan compared to some of these Asian countries? Uh, well, your full democracy. Number one reason. It's the uh, most liberal of the uh, uh, Asian countries and probably more accepting than Japan. They're very polite, they won't say anything to you on there, but probably behind the scenes, Taiwanese are more accepting than uh, Japan. And China, of course, just has China. Back in America, what do your friends know about Taiwan? Americans as a whole don't know much about Taiwan. 90% of their friends or people I talk to confuse it with Thailand. <laughs> They're like, oh, Thailand. I'm like, no, I'm in that other country, Taiwan. Never been to Thailand. Uh, it is one of the reasons why I started my YouTube channel. I saw some other foreigners. I'm like, oh, I could do that too. And it was a good way to kind of share with my friends of what it's like here beyond sharing like my post on uh, Facebook and stuff. So uh, a lot of that was came about just kind of letting my friends know what it's like, you know, being here. Being here. How is it like living in Taiwan as a foreigner in general? I think it's fine. It's, uh, like I said, it's pretty easy to assimilate. Uh, English is fairly prevalent. Uh, I mean, I've met foreigners who've been here 20 years and don't speak a leak of uh, uh, Chinese at all. I've been coming here for years and, you know, I, I get around with no problem. Uh, now with Translate, uh, you know, you can take a picture and kind of see what it is. Most of the areas are Taipei. Uh, restaurants all have English menus on there. If you're out farther out in the suburbs or in the middle of the area, it's all, it'll be probably a little bit more challenging uh, for foreigners, but most end up in the big two or three cities. I don't think it's much of an issue. Uh, night and day difference. Uh, America is a full capitalistic country, so Medicare is also a capitalistic uh, entity. Uh, insurance costs are extremely high. Uh, it's more fragmented because every business is its own entity, unlike here where you have like one medical card, one set of records, they go everywhere. Uh, some of that integration with the internet and cloud has become a little better, but it's not so cohesive uh, on there. Care is pretty good in both. Uh, some aspects of care could be a little bit better in America, maybe swords like experimental or newer stuff where Taiwan will make you go to uh, the original type of treatment first, that doesn't work, then maybe go to the next. Where in America you can just, if you want to pay, you can just go you know, to whatever care you want. But you do pay. Uh, it's a huge, huge difference in cost. I do all my regular checkups and all my health care here uh, in Taiwan. Uh, my premiums, and I use a basically a catastrophic type of care which means only bad things happen uncovered mm -hmm. it's still over four hundred dollars a month and the first eight or ten thousand dollars is out of my pocket and then they only pay up to eighty percent of the bill not the total bill whatever they think the bill should be so even though the doctor charges you ten grand they say well for this procedure we think it's six thousand and we'll pay eighty percent of oh, six thousand so it's just a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to tell Taiwanese people? We love you guys. You guys are great. Uh, like I mentioned, they're very, very hospitable. Uh, they work with my limited Chinese when I'm trying to practice. They always tell you what a great job you did, even though you didn't do a great job. But uh, again, they're just really gracious people. My immediate family is incredibly warm and gracious. Even though I may be considered an idiot American, they, they look past that and are still very, very uh, warming and uh, uh, kind and accepting. And, uh, okay, all right. Thank you very much and hope you continue to enjoy your stay in Taiwan. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it.